Okay, so guys, as the game starts, we're going to basically take eight consecutive action phases, just moving one hex each. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That'll put us in hex 13, 17. We'll go from 16, 10. Those eight action phases move us to the first action phase of 1850, which is still daylight. We started with 13 fuel. We'll use eight fuel, which will leave each of our airstrikes with five fuel. Okay, guys, here we are. We're at the beginning of the 1850 turn. The way the 1850 turn is broken down is the first action phase is still day. Phases two and three are dusk, and phase four, it becomes night. I'm going to keep this simple. Airstrike one is going to attack Butai one, two will strike Butai two, and three will strike Butai three. And we'll just see how it plays out. I'm trying to get a few different combinations of outcomes so you can see how the, the rules are played. And we're going to make a few decisions that aren't the best tactically but just show some of the options that you have and the cause and effect of those now attacking during the daylight is better than attacking at dusk it also helps when we're rolling on the contact table because at dusk we get a minus one modifier to our dice roll now, if we do not make contact, we can try a second time, and that's going to cost us fuel. So the gamble is, we move two hexes this turn, and we roll. We might have to use an additional fuel. We may not. We will not have to deal with the minus one dust modifier for contact if we do that this turn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take strike force one and we're going to move them one. We're not going to move a second one and take a chance of having to use a fuel for strike force one going for butai one, which means when we do go to contact next phase, we, it will be dusk and we will be at a minus one modifier. And again, I want you to see some of the different outcomes. So that's why we're doing that. Strike force two and three, I will move two. And on each of those, we will roll on our fuel expenditure summary. Basically, if we roll a six through 10, we spend an additional fuel. So let's roll for two, they roll a nine, they spend an additional fuel. Roll for three, they roll a seven and they would spend an additional fuel. But what we'll do again, just to show some of the pros and cons, we'll say that strike force three did was successful. Let's say they rolled a one. So I'm gonna go ahead and now, air strike force one is down to four fuel, two is down to three fuel, and three is down to four fuel. Alrighty, so it's still daylight. We're only in action phase one of the turn 1850. We're gonna start with airstrike two, and they're going to roll to see if they make contact with Butai two. Now in the scenario rules, it says to use the 810 column. It's not dusk, so we have no modifier. We roll an eight, we have contact. Let's check for airstrike three against Butai three. Roll a six. We have contact. Now, had that been at dusk, it would have been minus one. We would not have made contact, which may happen next action phase when airstrike one gets over Butai number one. So we've made contact. So the next part of the US airstrike segment 
In this particular case, for this scenario, we don't check the increase intel level or adjust commitment index. We go to the surprise to see if either of our airstrikes got surprise. Okay, I adjusted things there. So here's our surprise table. It's on card one back. Same with the strike contact table. Okay, so eight or less, there's no effect. Nine, partial surprise, 10, complete surprise. And I believe the scenario says that there are no modifiers on this, on the surprise roll. If I got that wrong, I'll put a note on the screen, but we're gonna play it as if there were no modifiers. So let's go with Butai 2, a 6, no effect. Butai 3 rolls a 9, a partial surprise. I was going to pick one of those two anyway just to show you the cause and effect, but we have a partial surprise. So when we get to it, anti-aircraft fire is halved. That's a huge. Wish it was Butai 2. <laughs> <laughs> Cap is minus one and plus one to our damage roll. Partial surprise is good. Ten would have been awesome. And we may do that on Butai one, just so you can see how that plays out. So Japanese cap gets resolved. Let's start with Butai two. Our airstrike two has five units against two, excuse me, against three units. So let's start with the US, five. They are fighters, so minus one on our roll. If we happen to roll a 10, we take out all of their cap. We rolled a one. We don't take out any of their cap. That's not good. Let's see what the Japanese do. They have three points. They roll an eight. An eight is an E result. Let me just check for modifiers. I see no modifiers. An E result. Versus any target, one unit eliminated. Okay guys, so the elimination means that we're going to lose one aircraft. And the rules state that if there are multiple types of aircraft, which in Strike Force 2 there are, there are the fighters and then there are the uh, bombers, or torpedo bombers or dive bombers, that we choose one of them randomly. But in this case, I'm going to remove one of the dive bombers. We're gonna take worst case scenario, boom. And we'll put that as a loss. Now, I may have missed this. I'm not sure if we go ahead and resolve all of the U.S. airstrike pieces or steps for everything on the board or one attack at a time. I'm going to do one attack at a time just because that's going to be easier for me to handle, and I don't believe that the effect of one affects another. So I think it's really what you're more comfortable with when you're playing, if you wanna do all of the, uh, now I did all the contact at the same time. I did the surprise at the same time. Uh, I guess maybe I should do the strike, <laughs> the, the uh, cap at the same time. And what did I do? I did Butai three or two. Excuse me, I did tie two. Uh, so let's go ahead and do the cap for it's there. It will move, but not moving yet. Okay, so we have two. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do tie three, which has a, a cap of two. So let's go ahead and roll on a, for them. An eight, they get an A, an A result. One attacking unit is aborted. Versus escort one surviving cap. Okay, may fire attacking points. Okay, so again, that's going to be random. This one will actually roll. Well, let's go ahead and see what we do. Uh, 
with our attack, we actually have three. So we're going to be rolling on this column, minus one. We roll a seven, which is a six. They lose one. Now, in this scenario, it almost doesn't matter too much because the cap can't, after the cap is resolved, um, they're not going to do any more attacking of the, the attack aircraft coming in. And in this particular scenario, we're going to do this one action phase. And because of our fuel, we're going to disengage and head home. So even as fighter odd is an attack, it is odd. So they're going to lose one of the attack. Now, when I say lose, it just means they're going to abort. They're not shot down. They're not lost. Uh, they're in the air. And they're just going to, actually, that's the wrong one. They are not going to be involved in the attack, which is really going to hurt them because they lost one in the air. But this one still has to fly home and try to land. Okay. Sorry, I'm getting my butais mixed up in my strike force. It's this one here from Strike Force 3. So they will have four aircraft, not five. That's fine. So with our Japanese anti-aircraft fire, let's start with Butai 2. Their total is 79. We can go over to the 80 column. And we're gonna roll. We get a nine. A nine result on the 70 column is a two slash two. Now there are only four aircraft attacking because they lost one to cap. A two slash two means two are eliminated and two abort. So we'll, we've lost three of our attack craft aircraft going into Bataille 2, two abort, there were only two left, which means they do nothing to Bataille 2. Wow. Okay, we now go to Bataille 3. They have a 38, which isn't quite 40, so we roll on the 30 column. We roll a two on the 30 column, zero, zero, Anti-aircraft fire has no effect. So now we go air to ship combat. We check our strength, which is 16. So it's going to go in the 20, excuse me, 16. Okay, 16 says to roll one dice and then roll one dice with a plus one. So we're gonna roll two dice. I think they could have just done this chart a little easier to read. They made it more complicated than necessary. So basically it's two dice, the red will be a plus one, and we're going to roll to see what um, our damage is. And then down below, you'll see that there's an air attack damage table on how many hits that we get to those carriers. So let's go ahead and, first of all, let's roll. Six and seven, we have 14. Okay, 14, because that's a seven. In the 14, 15 column, we get seven hits. Now let's look at the ships that are in Butai 3. I'll slide this over. Excuse me. And we're doing seven hits. So we can sink one of those aircraft. I don't know, I think we can assign our hits as we want. I'll double check that. But we're going to sink, does it flip? And we'll just put it there as a, as a, as a being sunk. So Butai 2, Butai 3 are done. We've got one aircraft sunk. We've lost three of our attacks and miserably failed on Butai 2. Okay, we go to action phase two. It is now dusk. 
there, moving there. Strike force two, or air strike two and three, both lose one more fuel. So two is at two fuel and three is at three fuel. Remember they successfully made their roll on moving two. Now this airstrike is gonna move one. It's now dusk, okay? Second phase of 1850 turn is now dusk. And we have to roll to see if the first airstrike makes contact with Butai one. Now there's our chart. We have a minus one because of dusk. We're on the eight column again. We roll a one. They don't make contact. I can now roll another dice to try a second contact attempt right here. That's gonna cost a fuel. A zero, we make contact. Now we're also gonna do something here that I didn't do in the other two just to show you how, how it can be done, okay? So, that gets our contact. Now we're gonna roll for surprise. Oh, I totally didn't do the surprise over here, did I? Oh, I completely forgot to do it on Butai 3. I would have added to our damage roll. Yeah, it would have made a difference. Okay, so you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna go ahead and just um, play that surprise here on, on Butai 1. So we've made the contact. We'll play this as we, we did get the surprise. So we're now going into the Japanese cap. Japanese cap is two. Go ahead and turn this back over. It's a two, but because of the surprise, it's minus one. We roll a 10, which is eliminated. The minus one is still a nine. They eliminate, and again, an even is a fighter. Okay, so that's not gonna make too much of a difference uh, when it comes to the combat against the air to ship combat. It's not gonna make any difference. Now, if we can eliminate both of these, the cap, we double our um, combat strength when we're rolling for damage. So in this particular case, let's, I'm, I'm gonna roll it. We only have two and it's minus one, so we have to roll a 10. So we rolled a 10. <laughs> So they lose two cap. And I'm doing this for a reason, guys. So now we move into the anti-aircraft phase. And actually that was that roll would have been a nine or a ten because of the minus one on the cap, but the plus one be, or the minus one for the fighters and the plus one for the cap would have negated. But we're gonna play it as a ten, not as a three that I rolled. So now we're going to get into the anti-aircraft. And again, because of the surprise, anti-aircraft is halved. Their anti-aircraft value is 18, so it becomes 9, and so they go into the 10 column. I believe, let me double check. I think it has to at least be 11, 10 or 11. So I think if it's less than 10, they don't get any anti-aircraft. Yes, in the rules it says if the anti-aircraft value is less than 10, it has no effect. So 18 cut in half makes it 9. Anti-aircraft has no effect. So now we're going to go and add up our attack value, which in this case is 10. Because there was no cap, it is doubled. Okay, so down here it says all U.S. attacks times two if no air-to-air -air combat within cap intercept hex. I don't think that applies here. 
because there was air-to-air -air combat. So had I done the air, the cap, uh, fighters come in, clear cap, and then come in with bombers, that would take an effect. So to show how devastating that can be, let's go ahead and assume that, uh, that I had a fourth air mission that was just the cap. They came in, they took care of the enemy, the Japanese cap, and now the airstrike unit's going in with no cap. And it was surprised, right? So, so we're gonna get maximum out of this, so just so you can see how this works. So we have 10, which then becomes 20. So when I look on this chart, I see 21, which is three dice, 18 is two dice with a plus one. So we're gonna basically add two to whatever we roll here. And again, because of the surprise, we get plus one to our damage roll. Okay, so we're already at plus three. Nine, 10, or 10 and two, 12 plus one is 13. However you wanna do your math. 12 to 13 gives us six. Oh, we could have just rolled decent here. So the Zukaku takes eight. Man, a decent roll we would have taken out the Zukaku. So damage is at six on the Zukaku. Okay, we'll keep that in mind. I don't know if there's a place to keep damage. I might have to write that down. Okay, guys. <clears throat> so we're going to count this out, the fuel. And I had forgotten to account for fuel for the attacks when I was doing that part of the video. Okay, so airstrike one. It would have gone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, we start with 13. So everybody is now down to five when we get to this location. Okay, and this is with the beginning of 1850, that turn. And remember that turn, action phase one is daylight, action phase two and three are dusk, and action phase four is night. And so we moved airstrike one, one square, right? So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Went to contact a second time, 11. It attacked 12. It goes 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 before it lands. It starts with 13. So that puts us at minus six, right? Airstrike two went one, two, used an extra fuel as three, so we're at eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, plus the airstrike is 19, puts us at minus six as well. And this was at eight, nine, 10, 11 for the attack, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Minus five. Okay, guys. So here we are. We're going to go ahead and try landing. We have airstrike one is at minus six. Airstrike two is at minus six on their fuel. Airstrike three is at minus five. Now, you cannot go to minus seven or you are eliminated. So the rules say you can't go to minus seven. We still need to land. So they accommodate that by having plus two if you could not spend one fuel. These two, strike one and strike two, cannot spend one fuel, so they're now going to be at eight. Strike force three can spend one fuel, so it does not get that added bonus. Uh, <laughs> it's not a bonus. So that's our amount of fuel overage was six plus the two because you could not spend the one fuel point plus one because it's illuminated at night. 
which now goes down to nine or up to nine or negative, you know, you're gonna add nine to your dice roll and we wanna roll low, okay? This does not get that two, it's five plus one. It's actually going to be, let's see, let me double check. Five plus one is six. Yeah, they were one more plus the two, total of three more. So everything's good there. So we're gonna roll one dice. We need to roll 11 or less. So we go with airstrike one, they roll seven. Seven and nine is 16 plus 14 units eliminated. Boom. Airstrike two, eight eliminated. Airstrike three is six plus one is seven, they land. Okay, for each Japanese carrier sunk, hits equal to or in excess of hit capacity, which we sunk the hero, award victory points equal to three times the carrier's air capacity, which is six, that's 18 victory points. For each carrier still afloat but damaged with its hits equal to at least half of its hit capacity, we did six on the Zikaku, so that meets those requirements. We get eight, 16 and eight is 24. Subtract one victory point per two US units lost, either in combat or safe return table. Hey guys. Okay, so a couple of thoughts. One thing, uh, yeah, I apologize for some of those errors. I had actually shot this video like three times. Uh, that last time was the closest to perfect that I could, that I got, so I decided to keep that and just try to edit it. And I think it's pretty clear. Um, leave comments down below if you got questions. As I go along, I'm going to do scenario three, four, five. I plan on doing one for the extended example or the um, advanced example, whatever they call it. Uh, so you can use that as kind of watch the video, read that as you kind of play along and learn the game. One thing I wanted to show and didn't was when you attack you use fuel but you do have the option to not use fuel you just have to adjust your attack column to the left by one so you're not going to be doing as much damage the concept i think in the notes was that you're using that extra fuel to line up your attack uh, therefore you're going to do a, a better job in my case i completely forgot to add the fuel while i was attacking and so I missed that. I'll pick that up in the third scenario though, so we'll make sure we do that and I'll try to highlight that example. But I think I covered everything that scenario two has to offer. I'm actually gonna play it a couple more times for myself because I wanna see if I can, how much I can actually sink and put some strategy into it. Again, I didn't really do much strategy. Not that there isn't some that was used. It was just, I wanted to try to show a number of different outcomes or potential outcomes uh, and again so so far i am really liking this system digging this game i can't wait till i have a much better understanding and can dig into a full campaign i'm not sure how long it's going to take to play but i my plan is to put it up on the channel when i get to that point so we're going to be with uh, the uh, carrier battle game for a bit i'll mix other games in on the channel in between but this is going to be this year. My goal is to really get this this game learned. Uh, and I've got the Terawa game as well from um, D-Day Terawa, which is another pretty intense solo game that I, I want to get learned this year. And then I can kind of give you guys some feedback on two of the more complex solo games. Anyway, that's where we are right now with Scenario 2. As uh, I always say, I appreciate you guys taking time to check out what I do here on the channel. If you haven't, please subscribe. It really will help me grow, and, you know, that makes me happy. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, you know, leave me any comments that you have. If I miss something, let me know. We'll correct it uh, going forward into Scenario 3. And until then, I'll talk to you in the next one. Goodbye for now.